even in the midst of this world that is falling apart and deteriorating, the wickedness that we see around us, the evil that we see around us, the wickedness, the sin that people commit against us for the reason, for, for the sake of Christ. Brothers and sisters, we have to remember to keep our to keep our mind, our heart, our soul fixed on the things that are lovely, the things that are true, the things that are pure, the things that are holy, the promises of God. We have to keep, brothers and sisters, the enemy is going to steal people's crown in this with, with people who cannot do this. And that is why it's so important to pray every day, Lord, keep my heart and my whole being fixed on you. Keep me, help keep me fixed on your cross. Lord, help me keep fixed on your promises and, and that I would handle the, the, the things that happen to me throughout the day, the way that your word prescribes. Let's let that be a part of our prayer, brothers and sisters, because there's a reason why it says in the word of God to guard your heart, brothers and sisters. And in that, we also have to remember that, you know, there is a time and a season for everything, just like it says in the word of God. And yes, brothers and sisters, there is going to be, you know, we must keep our heart and are be and and fixed on the promises and and things that are good and love and glorify and praise the Lord and remain in that Jerusalem, remain in that city of peace. That's what or King of Peace. That's what Jerusalem means. We must remain there, but we also have to remember, brothers and sisters, that there is a time for everything. Right? We are going through a purging, a refining. We are going through the word of the Lord is going to be fulfilled. And what is one of the books in the word of the Lord? Lamentations. There is a sanctification and a purification process, right? So, so many people get fixed on only, you know, the things that are lovely and true and pure and holy. And that's good. We should do that. But they also, when when things come in like lamentations or purification, purging and refining, right? They reject it and they don't see it for what it is, right? And so we need to be sensitive in the spirit, brothers and sisters. Pray every day that everything that comes your way, trials, tribulations, things that are good, all blessings, uh, the promises of God being fulfilled. Let let us pray that we would see each and every one of these things in the eyes of truth, in the eyes of the Holy Spirit. And let us not get caught up and carried away by our own feelings and how we feel about something. That's what so many people who are believers, they do. It's, a, it's about how they feel. And they mistake, they cannot differentiate between how they feel and what is the leading of the Holy Spirit. So let that be a part of something in your prayers every day, brothers and sisters. Um, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, who, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. There's a reason for that, brothers and sisters. And when you keep your heart and your being, right, not fixed on the negativity, right? And that, and like I said earlier, that doesn't mean to not acknowledge when the Lord is having you go through teaching you things or purification or cleansing refinement of things right but there's a reason when the lord says keep your heart fixed on these things because as together as a body throughout the whole entire earth when we keep our heart and our being our soul 
fixed on these things, we are going to hasten them. We are going to bring them faster and closer. So let us, let us remember, brothers and sisters, to keep our heart and our whole being fixed on these things. This is a word that the Lord showed me just a little while. All glory be to God. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. So, um, you know, we have been seeing, brothers and sisters, this these rains, these blessings come upon us mightily. But it also says in the first month. So I don't know if we're going to see um, a, a bigger a bigger portion of it in the first month. I don't know if it's talking about the first month, meaning April or whatever it is. But let's remember that that comes from the Holy Spirit. Keep your heart fixed on that, brothers and sisters, and you will hasten it. When you believe, right, when Peter, I think Peter and Paul were together and and they said and, and there was a guy there, he was like crippled. Um, you know, that happened several times. But Peter or Paul, I can't remember which one it is. The word of God says he perceived that he would have faith. And so, and so as he was led of the Holy Spirit, he said, get up and walk. Be, and why, what did Peter or Paul perceive that he had faith? When you believe in these things, brothers and sisters, when you come into agreement with the word of God and what it says, and the promises, the inheritance, brothers and sisters, never keep your mind off of those things. Because that is what is going to make them come to you. That is what is going to bring them to make them to become manifest in your life. If you don't believe, if you're not expecting, if you're not hoping in these things, how can they come to you? You could be blocking your inheritance, your blessing. Hallelujah. Receive this word, brothers and sisters. And I pray in Yeshua's mighty name that we would always remember to pray, to be sensitive, to differentiate in the spirit, the things of our own heart, our own desires, our own feelings, and the leading of the spirit, Lord. Take down in us whatever is hindering us from, from this being made manifest in our lives. In Yeshua, Jesus' mighty name, amen. Brothers and sisters, when people sin against you and they do wickedly against you, remember the things that you have done in the past, the things that you have done against others, the things that you have done against the Lord. Don't this is another thing where the enemy is is he's taking believers away because yes, they might be living righteously now. But when people come and do wickedness and evil to them, they forget about the times that when they lived like that. And that is not the way of Christ, brothers and sisters. What I am what I am teaching, what I am revealing is the ways of Christ. This is the way to life everlasting. This is the way that our great God and Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Abba in the flesh, taught us. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. Brothers and sisters, those who do not practice and live this way of life, they are not children. Of, those are not the first fruits children of God. Those are not those who have the manifested, who the Holy Spirit dwells with, with the manifested love of Christ. This is one of the most important things of the way to eternal life. Don't forget when people do wickedness and evil and things come upon you. Remember the time when you were an enemy of the cross, when you lived as an enemy of the cross. Have mercy on them. Have compassion on them. Pray for them. Don't let those situations harden your heart to them intercede for them stand in the gap for them pray that their souls not be lost in sheol 
Amen. I love you guys so much. Um, you know, brothers and sisters, um, I know everybody has already heard about it. And there's a brother, Frank Cott Pearson, who did a a um a good video about it. But this thing, brothers and sisters, this thing of this submersible that was named Titan that was going down into the into the uh, underworld it was going down to the very for, for to the bottom of the ocean right and and there's a reason why the pressure there is so great that it will crush a human body because people aren't supposed to go there it says in the word of god as either in isaiah or job that it says that when the people are running, I think it's in Isaiah, Job, I can't remember, but it says when the people are going to try to run away from the Lord in that in the great day, in the time of judgment, it says if they go up into the heavens, try to escape in the heavens, I will bring them down. If they try to go down to the bottom of the, the abyss or the bottom of the waters, the bottom of the ocean, there I will command the serpent to bite them. There is great, huge creatures that live at the bottom of the ocean, brothers and sisters. That's not a fairy tale. This is a fact. This is a word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord, right? And you'll notice, brothers and sisters, that when the Titanic sank in 1914 or something like that, right, what did what was the thing that the captain of the ship said? He said, not even God can sink the ship. Those are that is a child of pride. And what happened? That whole ship, only a few survivors came back from that. And they went down to the it went down to the bottom of the Atlantic. And then two years later, World War I st started. Brothers and sisters, these things are used, right? Well, the guy who was on the net, one of the guys that lost his life, right? And one of these people was a minor. It was a child. Brothers and sisters, sometimes these things are offerings. And, and there's a reason why that thing was called Titan and is called um, uh, Ocean Gate. Ocean Gate CEO, Stockton Rush. Right, even that very name, the name Rush, you know, there in, in the word of the Lord, it says, um, it when it talks about Russia, it says Rush, Rush and Meshach and Tubal. That that rush, it means something in the it's talking about a coming in of a wave of wicked evil spirits, judgment. And then you look, brothers and sisters, what happened. Shortly, only a couple years, I think, after Titanic went down. World War I, and then followed by World War II. Brothers and sisters, there's a reason why this happened. And when this is called Ocean Gate, this is talking about opening up a portal, a gateway, down from the abyss. And when a big offering like that happened last time, a rush of wicked spirits came out and started operating in man. And then years later, one of the bloodiest battles that has ever happened. But brothers and sisters, this time, it is not, it, it is going to be much worse. There is going to be much more bloodshed this time. Right. And and I know it says, brothers and sisters, you know, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are pure. But it also says whatever things are honest, brothers and sisters. And and a lot of people use this scripture and they say, oh, only think about things, only focus on those things that make you feel good and that what you think. Brothers and sisters, it says whatever things are honest and true. And this is honest and true and the good thing is is that by your decisions by the way that you choose to live your life 
you can be counted worthy if you believe. Brothers and sisters, one of the, you know, when you go into a room and somebody is freshly painting it, when you go, this is the eclipse that is happening in the constellation Virgo on October 14th, 2023, three, a little over three months from now. Brothers and sisters, you know, when it talks about the sacrifice, why the Lord told Moses to set up the tents in a certain way and have an outer area and then inside is the Holy of Holies and put the blood in there. Brothers and sisters, do you know when you go into a room that's freshly painted? How come, how can we smell the paint? The paint isn't in our nose, but you can smell it. You know, maybe when you go into an area where they're, where they're, you know, um, making wood or in an area where they're a, a butcher area where they're slaughtering animals, you can smell the blood. You know, when you go into a lumber mill and you can smell the, the fresh cut wood. Why is that? Because as those things are drying up, brothers and sisters, right? As that paint is drying, there's little tiny molecules of it that are drying up. And, and the reason it's drying up is that heat and the, the environment of the world, and it's making it dry up. And those little tiny molecules are going into the air. And that's why you can smell them. Right. That's why it's not good to go into a room that's painted and stay in there. You can get sick. You can get a headache because those little molecules of the paint are going into your body. Little tiny. It's it's not the well, it is the essence of the paint that's going into your body. Right. But it's only because it's drying. It's because the atmosphere of the air and the heat. And a combination of things is drying it out and those molecules are going up into the air. It's the same thing when you smell something, right? You smell blood in an area where they're butchering animals or you go into a lumber mill or a plastics factory, right? It's because those things are heating up and the environment of the of the world of the earth is is drying up those things and those little molecules are going in the air and you're smelling them brothers and sisters the lord told them on the day of atonement take the blood of the animal and sprinkle it on the horns of the altar and he said he he, he said it's his presence was able to be there. Why? Because that is innocent blood. It's it's because that innocent blood was manifesting an environment of innocence. Where the Lord, the spirit of the Lord could dwell even in the earth. Those little tiny molecules of the innocent animal was going, was being in the air. And so the spirit of the Lord could dwell there. There's a reason that the Lord said to do these things, brothers and sisters. But this is why, this is the more important reason why I'm telling you this, is because it is the same with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. On, night, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it. The blessing of God came upon that bread and it became the bread of life that comes down from heaven. Spoken of in the word of the Lord in the Old Testament and all throughout. And then he took the cup. And he gave thanks. And what does it say? In when you give thanks unto the Lord, it blesses that drink. You're actually changing the structure of what you're drinking. 
Abba's blessing comes upon it. He took the cup and gave thanks and blessed and, and he gave thanks and said, this is my blood. Brothers and sisters, when you partake of that bread that becomes his body and that cup which becomes his blood, that is, brothers and sisters, those are the words of the Lord himself. Matthew 26, 26. That environment is then made manifest. That's why the Lord said, do this in memory of me. It's not just normal bread after the blessing. It becomes the bread of life. Brothers and sisters, this is the truth. This is the truth from the Holy Spirit. The interpretation is accurate. It becomes the bread of life. And when you partake in that, it go, it manifests in your body and it takes away. That's why John said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Because and, and it says that the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach purges, continually purges from sin and unrighteousness. Part, brothers and sisters, when we partake in this, it is creating an environment. It is taking away our sins and having an environment where the Holy Spirit can dwell. Brothers and sisters, the most, some of the most important signs of our time that we will ever see are going to soon be here, made manifest and be seen. October 14th, 2023 is a huge one. April 8th, 2024 is also a big one. And it is one of the most important things, the decisions that we make from now up until then can determine what is going to happen to people in eternity? This is the most important time, brothers and sisters. This is what the Lord has been showing me the past few days. The word of the Lord. He that have escaped the sword... Go away, stand not still, remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. It's talking to us who have escaped the sword, the sword of the invasion of the Chaldeans, this spiritual wicked flood of invasion that is happening Why people are losing their minds and they're being inhabited by evil, evil spirits. There are some of us that have been marked where that has not happened to us. We have the seal of God. And that sword has not come upon us in this way. We are confounded because we have heard reproach. Shame hath covered our faces. For strangers are coming to the sanctuaries of the Lord's house. Strangers. And this is the Lord's house too. And yes, it has happened physically in churches, but as Great, more greatly talking about people's temples, strange things, spirits, and evil atoms and molecule, which is the physical manifestation of spiritually of what is going on inside of people's temples in a place where it ought not be. Wherefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will do judgment upon her graven images throughout all her land, the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. A sound of a cry cometh from Babylon, and great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans, because the Lord hath spoiled Babylon, and destroyed out of her the great voice, when her, wa when her waves do roar like great waters, and a noise of the voice of their voices uttered because the spoiler is come upon her, even upon Babylon and her mighty men are taken. Every one 
of their bow bows is broken. For the Lord God of recompenses shall surely requit. And I will make drunk her princes and her wise men, her captains, her rulers, her mighty men, and they shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken and her high gates shall be burned with fire and the people shall labor in vain. And the folk in the fire and they shall be weary. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Messiah, when he went with Zedekiah, king of Judah, into Babylon in the fourth year of his reign. And this Sariah was a quiet prince. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all the, these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, When thou comest to Babylon, and shall see, and shall read all these words, then shall thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but, it, but that it shall be desolate forever. And it shall be, when thou hast made an end of the reading of this book, that thou shalt bind, bind a stone to it and cast into the midst of the Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Brothers and sisters, this system, this system, country that was built on the spirit of Egypt and Babylon, this system that rules and reigns in the world, this country, it is going to be destroyed. It is going to be desolate. Brothers and sisters, when it talks about no man no, or the, this land not being inhabited again, you know, all this, tet this activity on the tectonic plates and how things are shifting, there's being a break that is happening in Africa, right? The tectonic plates all over the earth are shifting. And you know, those plates, those plates that when they rub across one another and and, you know, if this is one plate and another plate is over it, and this is where America is, those plates can shift down and take the whole land that we stand on down, down, down into the abyss. Brothers and sisters, these, these shifts, these changes in the world are going to happen, whether people believe or think them or not. When so much wickedness and evil happens to a place, brothers and sisters, there's a reason why that the cities of Atlantis and all the evil places and a lot of the evil places after the flood, why the Lord allowed the sea and the waters of the abyss to, to settle on those places to keep them under the water so that man would not go there again. Because there was so much blood sacrifice, so much wickedness, so much evil, so much conjuring, so much evil wickedness that happened there. That the Lord did not want man to go there ever again. The same shall be for Babylon. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I love you in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen.